Hello, good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's eight o'clock on Saturday, the 15th of January, and we're using the Epiphany season material from a Common Worship from the Church of England, and uh, you can find that in the eponymously titled book in the uh, second major division. There's prayer during the day, at the beginning, then uh, morning and evening prayer, ordinary time in the seasons, and you're wanting the in the seasons section. Uh, you can find them uh, online at uh, the church's website, Arima's Daily Prayer, or one can download Apple or Android apps for whatever devices um, you prefer. And or you may just listen. Um, I'm in the building, so you're very welcome to join me. Eight and six every day bar Monday. Sunday we do traditional communion at eight and uh, traditional said even song in the evening with uh, hymns. So you're welcome to join me for those. And uh, during the week on other days, uh, including Saturday, clearly um, I'm in here doing common worship, morning and evening prayer, as I am now. We're also on Zoom. The code for that is on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're streaming on the Facebook page. Good morning to you if you're following there. And I upload the audio onto my um, Dominic Doble YouTube channel. <coughs> and uh, somebody's just joining us on Zoom. Good morning, Tom. Morning, Tom. And uh, I have my jealous dog with me. Now I've started to talk. He's uh, wanting attention. Those of you on uh, Facebook can just see him there in the dark, gloomy corner of the picture. But uh, hopefully he'll settle. So we're just about to begin with morning prayer, Epiphany season, Saturday the 15th of January. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations, to you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of joy. Verses from Psalm 100. May be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. <coughs> know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you're following in the book, you'll find the Psalms at the back. Those appointed this morning are 29 and 33. If you're following online, uh, they'll be provided for you. We open and close with the refrains as given. We say the glory be between the last verse and the repeating of it. And uh, pause briefly to use the prayers if, you look as, if they look as if you will find them helpful. 
Psalms 29 and 33. We'll read by alternate verses. Do you join in with David in the even numbers or listen as we make our way? The Lord Lord shall shall give his people people the blessing blessing of peace. peace. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is mighty upon the mighty waters. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like skip like a calf. And Syria like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. In his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory Glory to the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The earth is is full of the loving kindness kindness of the Lord. Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. For it is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the lyre. On the ten string harp, sing his praise. My dog's joining in. Apologies. Sing for him a new song. Play skillfully with shouts of praise. For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all of their hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathers up the waters of the sea as in a water skin, and lays up the deep in his treasury. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Stand in awe of him, all who dwell in the world. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He frustrates the desires of peoples. But the counsel of the Lord shall endure forever, and the designs of his heart from generation to generation. Happy the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the children of earth. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze and all that dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. No king is saved by the might of his host, no warrior delivered by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. For all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait in hope for his steadfast love. <coughs> to deliver their soul from death and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits longingly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. In his holy name have we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have set our hope on you. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. So scrolling past our first reading to the Song of the New Jerusalem, if you're online in the book, turning back to the canticle in morning prayer during Epiphany season. It's called A Song of the New Jerusalem, and we'll read it as we did the psalm. Above you, you, the the Holy Holy One arises, and above above you, God's God's glory glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Night still covers the earth, and darkness the peoples. <coughs> above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. <coughs> your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall, not, shall be heard no longer in your land or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendour. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. So scrolling back online, or if you're following in the Bible, turning to the first book in the Hebrew Scriptures, the first book of the law, Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 to 10. The chapter number of the large numbers at the head of the paragraph and the small numbers in the text are the verses. Genesis 6 from verse 1. Thank you, David. And people began to multiply on the face of the ground, and daughters were born to them. The sons of God, the sons of God saw that they were fair, and they took wives for themselves of all that they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in mortals forever, for they are flesh. Their days shall be one hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God went into the daughters of humans who bore children to them. These were the heroes that were old warriors that were of old warriors of renown. <coughs> the Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he made humankind on the earth, and he grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But now I have found favour in the sight of the Lord. These are the descendants of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. <clears throat> and Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and <clears throat> Thank you. The first paragraph, it seems to me, ends with the reason it was written. As I say when talking to people about reading the Bible, we can come to it and... Uh, when we come to it, perhaps, is a better way of putting it, we should decide as we read whether the main purpose of the story is um, its literal interpretation or whether the main point of the story is the metaphor to which it alludes. And I think the last line here, these were the heroes of, of old, 
We can imagine the writers sort of needing to put down why it is that there were these great heroes of the past. <clears throat> um, we sometimes celebrate people that have died to such an extent that they become, I suppose, saints in our own tradition, but sort of larger than life as we add to them stories which may or may not be true, but are, if you like, or factually accurate, but may be true in terms of the person's character and the sort of thing they might have done. And so to some extent it doesn't actually matter too much if it's factually accurate. And here, this explanation is that um, there are somehow um, sons, sons of God, which is an expression of humanity, but here I think refers to angels or sort of angelic beings going into the, um, the daughters of humans. Um, Jesus called himself the son of man, but uh, expressions of God somehow um, having children with humans. That's not described as wicked, interestingly, but um, the next paragraph, humans going into each other, um, <clears throat> or at least um, humanity, um, is described as being very evil. And that's just such a tragic paragraph. God um, lamenting the fact that he made humans, but for Noah, in whom he finds, or who finds favour in his sight. We might look around the world today, and we might have similar um, misgivings that uh, humanity has so much power. But we must remember that only a chapter or two ago, God described humanity as being good and was walking in the garden um, with us uh, in paradise, in God's presence, a time of fruitfulness and blessing. And uh, so it hasn't taken long in our story to get to this point where God decides to wipe us all out. And uh, the way we're going at the moment, we're likely to um, wipe ourselves out, so God doesn't necessarily need to act. But even then, even with that extraordinarily depressing paragraph, the Lord was sorry he'd made humanity. That closing line, again, perhaps has the key to the message again of that paragraph. But Noah found favour in the sight of the Lord. And so may we find favour. And as the reading comes to a close, that righteous man has children <clears throat> and Traditionally, they were deemed to be the three main tribes of the earth, whether we quite hold to that now. But I suspect if you go back to anthropology and to early DNA, there may well have been three early strands. And so that righteousness, that relationship with God that is nascent in Noah is still available to us. And so we must be grateful. Matthew 22 is our next reading, turning to the um, second covenant or Greek scripture. Matthew opens that, so if you're following the Bible, it's uh, about two-thirds of the way through. You should find a title page, and we move into the Christian scriptures. We're looking for the large number at the head of the paragraph 22, chapter 22, and then verses 34. So that's small numbers in the text, verses 34 following. Thank you, David. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. <coughs> Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your own neighbour as yourself. These two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <clears throat> now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. And he said to them, How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Shall I put your enemies under, until I put your en enemies under your feet? If David thus calls the Lord, uh, calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare ask him any more questions. <clears throat> Thank you. We have had elsewhere in the Gospel of Matthew, certainly in other Gospels, um, stories of Pharisees, um, particularly, 
and the scribes engaging with Jesus in conversation. And as I said yesterday, when we opened this section, um, which are clearly um, cantankerous, um, these ones Matthew actually opens by saying, um, as our reading today, they asked a question to test him. So the Pharisees learned that the Sadducees had been silenced. They asked a question about the resurrection, which Jesus um, sort of dispensed with summarily. So the Pharisees are coming back to win a point against the Sadducees. They were the two main sects that developed actually after the time of Jesus, but they are written into the Gospels in the recollection and the memory of those who wrote them up. Uh, one of these is a lawyer, we're told, so particularly bright and able to formulate arguments that are potentially um, entrapping <coughs> or um, at least achieve the ends that the um, enquirer is looking for. Which is the greatest of the laws? Uh, and I guess that is a discussion that people would have had. Um, much as we might say what might have happened in any circumstance if something else had happened instead, one of those sort of academic um, time-wasting discussions that develops communication, conversation, community perhaps. Which is the greatest? And therefore, if he had said one over and above the other, then they would have been able to hold him to account and uh, proclaim that he didn't believe or didn't support the rest. I guess a question similarly would be if you um, stop beating your dog or some such, um, because if you aren't sure in any way, it suggests that you were before, so uh, whether you're going to continue. So Jesus cleverly summarises the law, and this is a summary that they may have used then in liturgy, but we use it now, um, Book of Common Prayer. I'm not quite sure where it came in, but uh, aside from Advent and Lent, I use it uh, instead of the um, rehearsing of the Ten Commandments. You shall love the Lord your God through all your heart, soul, mind, strength, body. Uh, I've added those last couple because they appear, I think, in what we use in the liturgy. And you shall love your neighbours yourself. And that could well have been a summary that was already used but certainly has been borrowed from this uh, scripture uh, in our, the way we take Book of Common Prayer, or the way I do it uh, today. And then Jesus asks them a question. Uh, they clearly don't respond to his uh, answer, but then he asks them one, who is the Messiah, whose son is he? Uh, he calls himself the son of man, uh, and there was obviously some discussion amongst the Pharisees that um, the Messiah um, would be um, the greatest, um, but presumably also um, the son of David. And uh, Jesus says, well, how is it then that Dave, God says to David, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet? If David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? Right, David speaks to the Spirit. It is very confusing. David says by the Spirit to, the, to God, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. So Jesus is saying here that David is speaking to the Messiah and calling him Lord. So how can he be his son? And uh, there might have been some questions to whether Jesus was a son of David. And we speak of him as being so. And Matthew makes great uh, pains at the beginning of his gospel to provide a lineage. <clears throat> so maybe that was a later edition. I don't know. But this is one of those technical um, sort of password it's a test of who believes what it's perhaps an undermining by Jesus of their security maybe we might today question um, apostolic succession for example to people for whom that is important to help people understand as I would argue that the Holy Spirit operates through um, sort of inherited blessing but also directly so vertical and horizontal if I might put it like that so some quite complicated and difficult um, discussions this morning But effectively, it's uh, Jesus engaging truly, rightly, graciously with those who would trip him up and to try and lead them on, I guess, and demonstrate um, the, the veracity, the truth, the credibility of his knowledge and witness. So let's move to the responsory back in morning prayer during Epiphany. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth the whole tremble, earth tremble before, before him. Turn it out among the nations that the Lord is king. Who worship, worship the Lord, Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let, Let the whole earth tremble before him. 
declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. The Song of Zechariah. We'll read it straight through as if it were all in bold. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. This is the Christ, the Chosen of God, the One who will bring healing to the nations. Let us pray. <coughs> Source of the Sabbath, heir of peace, comforter, Advocate, three in one, one in three. We thank you for this day of rest, and we pray that you will enable us to be peaceable and peaceful in it. We pray that all who are striving to bring rest to creation, <clears throat> to situations of anxiety and poverty, violence, abuse, oppression, will be successful in their mission, even if they rest today. We thank you for that cycle of sleep, and uh, alertness of a hibernation <clears throat> and activity. We pray that our land will rest, such as it may continue to be uh, a source, a resource of fruitfulness, that we will allow room and space in our lives for wildlife and creation, that it may thrive and flourish for its own sake and that we may benefit from it. We pray that as we rest, we extend the life of this planet and our own lives. And we thank you that those, for those who do strive to create and generate rest, for those who are anxious, concerned, violent. <coughs> Amen. World Prayer News Feed and my prayer mate app this morning, Life in Abundance International. <coughs> Since September, uh, this organisation has been experiencing, or the people rather, of northern Kenya and Somalia have been experiencing a severe drought, receiving less than a third of their usual rain, the worst short rain season in decades, causing food and water shortages. So we pray for churches and Christians in these countries to continue to spread light and hope. We pray for divine insight and guidance as they navigate COVID restrictions, government mandates and other challenges. We pray for the teams as they work with local people. Amen. From Christian Action Research and Education, we are grateful for the meticulous work of the National Cyber Security Centre to prevent cyber attacks and build resilience in computerised systems. We ask that you grant them success as they work with others to collect and analyse information and take effective action. Amen. From Green Christian, scientists surveying the Mediterranean have found four species, including sperm whales and dolphins, in an area close to Crete, where Total Energies and ExxonMobil are set to start seismic tests to explore for fossil fuels. A new Greenpeace report shows sperm whales are an endangered species in that sea due to low numbers and vulnerability to activity, human activity. Campaigners warn about the dire threats to these mammals, including 
the loud noise pollution from seismic blasts if the oil company's plans go ahead. We pray that they don't. Amen. Well, I do anyway, I guess. You may add your amen like David did just then, but um, it's uh, outrageous, it seems to me. <clears throat> um, our prayers from the Blythe Cluster, some uh, themes to consider. We pray for our elected representatives. We thank you for um, those who work at town, district, county, national and beyond, government, public sector staff, and uh, those in our towns and villages running halls and other local facilities. We thank you for them. Uh, we pray that uh, they will be people of uh, honesty and integrity, of wisdom, and uh, we thank you for the leadership of uh, our Queen, and uh, we pray that people will learn uh, from her uh, how to act in public, and uh, we pray that uh, truth will out, justice will be done, and that uh, all people and all our influence and all those things that we affect in our own land and around the world will be taken into consideration as decisions are made, and that those decisions will be the best possible for all concerned. Amen. We thank you for our people. Today we pray for our ministers, uh, for me as the team rector, for Ginny to be joining us as team vicar, for Alison and Linda, our assistant curates, for Vic, David, Anna, Jonathan as the honorary associate priest, and uh, Diana, our reader, and our elders, uh, Margaret, Jason, Alison, Robert, Malcolm, John, Eileen and Janet, we thank you for them and we pray your blessings on them that uh, you will teach, lead, guide, encourage, promote uh, their faith experience among us that we all may grow together and uh, draw others with us to you as you change us from glory to glory. Amen. And in my corona side, we pray for those who are dealing with people who have the virus the emergency medical services, we pray that they will have adequate time off themselves as we remember time off on this day of rest. We pray too that they will have adequate resource at work, there will be enough of them, they can have time off, that they will be protected themselves in terms of not catching the disease, but also that they will have enough kit to fulfil their professional training and make the best interventions they are able to. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, yeah, amen. The collect for the season from the book, Almighty God in Christ, you make all things new, transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, our in, Father heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, name. Your, kingdom come, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook. Good to have you with us this morning and to those on YouTube.